whatever you want You're so very special I wish I was special But I'm a creep I'm a weirdo What the hell am I doing here? You know, when I came to Prince William in 2001, the Hilton had been conceived, hadn't been structured, hadn't been designed, but the idea had been established and it was clear that there were several, you know, thought leaders and clearly Kathy was at the heart of it, the center of it. And I was asked by uh, Craig Gerhardt at the time to participate in the strategic planning of the county. And in that exercise, was introduced to the whole role of strategic planning and how, how important it is and how structural it is, how fundamental it is to the decision makers of John and his colleagues and Marty and, and Janine. And um, I learned at that time that there had been a strategic plan 25 years ago, <laughs> maybe not quite that, but a long time ago, when Kathy Seafeld was in charge of something, and it was in there that we would have a performing arts center. And it took a year or two, but it's just pretty amazing how if somebody is dedicated, and you know, I'm kind of noisy, and a lot of times I like to just make things happen. My colleague came up to me and said, Bill, you know, you could pick the glass up and set it down, or you just put your hand on it and just gently move it, gently move it, gently move it. Before you know it, it'll go past where you set it down, right? Well. That's how Kathy struck me. I'm sure there were times when she picked the glass up and set it down, but my experience was, no, she just had her hand on that glass and just kept moving it and kept moving it, and all of a sudden, and as we celebrate the arts, we realize, wow, um, how right it is that we gather together and we have places to do that gathering uh, across the entire <coughs> campus and enjoy this creative force so vital. You know, we uh, did the new strategic plan just recently, and we did the moonshot. We're going to do a moonshot. Well, I guarantee you, it's going to take a lot of music to make a moonshot work. A lot of art. Um, it doesn't just happen with money. It happens with, with the things, it happens with our stories, the things we tell each other about each other, the, the memories that we share and those moments of beautiful music and extraordinary pictures and insights into each other's hearts and souls. That's actually where the moonshot comes from. So we're in good shape, I think. And so we now begin our acknowledgments and our recognition of the Award of Excellence for Outstanding Business Supporter presented to a business that has a significant history of support in this region. And this is not going to surprise anybody um, many of the artists have received, in fact, the Hilton Performing Arts Center, um, probably everybody in the room, from NOVAC, Northern Virginia Electric Cooperative. And representing NOVAC, championing our community, please come forward, Mike Curtis, Public Relations Department. Mike. Novak, Susan, are you here? Yes. Oh, good, here you go. I saw you earlier, I knew you were here. <laughs> Would you please come up? Uh, Novak is so integral. First of all, you're my electrical company. <laughs> and uh, my lights never go out. I don't know about your lights, they just don't. And, uh, and we're really grateful. Um, I think the light you shine is more than electricity. I think it's, it's that sense of encouragement that just simply is always there. And it's under your leadership, Mike, um, and Shirley, and the whole organization that you follow up so often, not just with money, but with all kinds of support. Um, items for 
everybody's events and their fairs, but more often than not, people support. And that sense of uh, encouragement that, that matters all the time. Uh, major corporate sponsor for Arts Alive, five years, and you have truly touched all of our lives and all of our hearts, and we are grateful. Thank you, sir. Outstanding patron of the arts. Individual leader, advocate, friend, whose support positively impacts our region, establishes that leadership role and has significant impact on artists and arts organizations. For example, in Shirley and John Rice's nomination, they are noted for their above and beyond encouragement of diverse arts organizations and championing rising star groups. The 2017 Outstanding Patron of the Art Award goes to Nancy S. Klein. Yeah. A published author, that's a big deal. Definitely. And through the Clearbrook Foundation and Amelia May, would you come up too for the photo? Creating opportunities for local artists and that these artists should be compensated for their work. Brought together the Boy Scouts and artists from NBCC in collaboration for the ongoing bench project, which turned into benches. Right? We are beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful benches. benches throughout Tackett's Mill. So we all got to go down there now and see them if you haven't been there. Um, Clearbrook's signature project is Community Garden, where Nancy is working with local artist Nicholas Zimbro to enhance his artistic vision of infusing public art all around the county in unexpected places. She has ensured Tackett Mill, Tackett's Mill leads the way by commissioning a mural on its property. You're busy. <laughs> Do you raise this money or you just give it away? <laughs> <laughs> and housing a glass work of art created by local <coughs> artist Ian Kessler Gowell. Um, encased outside the Occoquan District Supervisor's Office. I need to go see that. It's gorgeous. Um, Nancy has championed right by the rails and Prince William County's inaugural Poet Laureate program. Now next year, you have to make the Laureate memorize one of their poems. Right? <laughs> That's a promise, right? right? Thank you very much and congratulations. I just want to thank DeAndrea Wooten who works with me at the Clearbrook Foundation. And, and I'd also like to thank Brianna Altman, who has been an inspiration. She's a facilitator, and she brought us Amelia May. So, I'd also like to thank Shirley and Tom Rice for, for being supporters, because we need more of them, of the arts. Outstanding volunteer for the arts. I will guarantee you this. Any arts organization that's actually in trouble is because they have not paid enough attention to the care and feeding of volunteers. It's really true. You know, we sit and study this stuff in my arts management program, and it's called the Magic 100. You get a Magic 100 volunteers, and it will shoulder the burden of any nonprofit that ever exists. And when you look at the ones that are in trouble, they got five or six. Maybe. And uh, someone once said, your job isn't to put on art shows and to feed the hungry and heal the sick. Your job is to build a volunteer group. And through that, do all those things. And I really believe that's true. So the outstanding volunteer of the arts, a significant amount of time, and that is, of course, the coin of the realm, right? What's the one thing that is truly finite? Time. 
Everything else is infinite. That's what I think. In not time. You accomplish so much and you generate volunteers, resources. If you think about it, time value of money is what makes business work, right? And so if it's money that you have to use all the time, then it's going to have a limit because time value, time has a limit. But if you use volunteerism, there's no limit. There's no theoretical limit to how much you can give away and how many people you can get to give it away, both right now and across history, across time. So it's the big deal. And um, there were four nominees in this category. Arts Council Chair Amelia May was elected to the council as a community arts supporter and has contributed her expertise to efficient, effective, and well-planned events, volunteering to bolster the county's membership. For the Woodbridge Music Club, Jane Suffet has arranged, June Suffet, excuse me, has arranged over 35 local performances as their events coordinator, contracting artists and venues, negotiating costs, marketing, welcoming the artists to our community. Claire Mikulski Ullman was a key participant in the formation of PAC, Performing Arts for Kids, because she believes that the arts are an integral part of a well-rounded education. The award for Outstanding Arts Volunteer this year honors Christopher Dixon. <laughs> Yeah, you can use the steps. <laughs> Chris serves on the Old Bridge Chamber Orchestra Board of Directors, is the personnel coordinator and its principal second violinist. As the personnel coordinator, Chris ensures that each concert is staffed with musicians, growing the organization from a tiny group with personnel gaps to a full orchestra of 65 for the American Masterpieces concert this May 27th. Happens to be my anniversary, by the way. <laughs> Two recent examples of Chris's dedication were a June 2016 collaboration with Dance Etc. and a February 2017 collaboration with the Virginia National Ballet. In both instances, the collaborators choreographed ballets to instrumental recordings of famous operas. Upon doing this research, Chris realized there was no sheet music commercially available for either opera. Where's this going? <laughs> For dance, etc., he orchestrated the vocal parts into instruments. Can you do that? <laughs> to match the recording that the dancers used for practice. That's not easy. For February's event, Chris tracked down the arranger of La Boheme Ballet, adapted in Australia, to obtain the music and prepared the parts for the orchestra, using the choreographer's, choreographer's notes with the Australian recording. Do you do this with pro shop or something, or do you do it by hand? Yes, scissors and tape. <laughs> 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 did it work? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Christopher. Outstanding arts educator, teacher artist, depth of knowledge. Mm, I think teaching is my highest value, I think. Um, who is your favorite teacher? Somebody comes into your mind right away, doesn't it? They never leave you. Uh, inspiring students, lifelong love of the arts. Five nominees, Bonnie Bacon of Spotlight Dance Studio loves dance, but she loves her students more. She teaches them to work collaborative rather than competitively, but always to strive to do their best. Lucetta Force, Lucetta Four of Woodbridge Dance has been an Lucetta. Lucetta. It's Lucetta. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucetta. Lucetta Four of Woodbridge Dance has been an instructor for over 15 years, 
believing that dance is for everyone, regardless of age and ability. Are you sure? Because <laughs> if it's true, then my wife will be finally happy that I can dance. She engages critical thinking. Have you ever tried to remember a real dance? You can't be stupid and be a dancer. It's not possible. Do you know they count? When they do those moves, they're actually counting in their heads. That's how they remember. They don't remember pick your foot up and not pick your arm up. They're counting. It's unbelievable. Yeah, having your students apply math skills and physics and dance steps and formations. And then you wonder why. Uh, Sarah Guidish Ordway, a dancer with a manette. These are all dancers. Mm. With the Manassas Ballet Theater and the Manassas Academy is a point video of the month winner offering international expertise integral to the preparation of classical ballet dancers and appears in the History Channel's miniseries as a ballerina. A role model to her young students, the th to her young students' aspirations. The three-person team of the marketing division of the City of Manassas Parks Department of Parks and Recreation, Maria Bosak, Austin McGowan, and Jason Schreiner develop educational outreach for their community. Their See Global, Stay Local event began with promoting the arts, growing into a community festival. Our multicultural ethnicity through art, literature, and firsthand accounts and activities. The 2017 Outstanding Arts Educator is Julie Little. <laughs> Come on up. And Kathy Terrell, Terrell and Kathy Gorchek, <coughs> nominators. Can you join? Julie strongly believes in the importance of providing an enriching theater experience that connects students with the Im imaginary world of drama and the practical application of a theater production. You know what I always say, if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. <laughs> Her troupe has explored classic literature theater with an emphasis on skills that include acting, character development, student direction, technical production, and stage crew duties. Julie manages all aspects of design and rehearsal, supervises 40 plus young actors, and her background spans teaching theater history, dramatic literature, and play adaption. She has training in acting, directing, and production, and holds a Master of Fine Arts degree in theater. The troupe has performed sketches for a local senior facility and scheduled theater-related trips and events. Congratulations. Next is the award for Outstanding Individual Artists to one who exhibits creativity, passion, and exemplary performance in the field. Is a source of influence and inspiration for other artists, new and established. Is recognized by his or her peers and reviewers for excellence and leadership in the field and draws attention and recognition to the region. There were six artists nominated in this category. Rafiq Higab, the artistic director and co-founder of the Virginia National Ballet and the Gainesville Ballet School is described as the gentle master of passion and creativity, encouraged both his professional and young students to strive for perfection while enjoying dance. Nancy Hirsch Ingram is a visual artist who has demonstrated skill in many media printmaking, drawing, portraiture, sculpture, watercolor, and mixed media ranging from highly abstract to representational forms to public <coughs> portrait commissions, including the last seven mayors of Manassas. And for those of you who don't know, I think this building is built on Granny Hirsch's farm, right? I th we're, this, is, this is your pasture. She's also shown in the Benali in Italy, too. Um, Photographer Suheil Muir has been teaching the art of photography from beginning through advanced in schools in our region and providing
free photography services to nonprofit organizations of the county, including Arts Alive. Creative Brush Studios Mary Riley is known for her lifelike portrayals of people and animals, many of which hang on the walls of her studio. Her works are featured in collections at the U.S. Court of Veteran Appeals in Washington, D.C., University of Virginia, Washington Hospital Center, and more. Kathy Strauss of Imageworks shares her passion for the arts by donating hundreds of hours of time teaching, exhibiting, coaching, and mentoring artists of all skill levels and ages. Through her unique and creative classes at the Lorton Workhouse, Kathy has inspired countless individuals from early childhood up to senior citizens to embrace their inner artist and display their work proudly. The sixth nominee is our awardee. The 2017 Outstanding Artist is Martin Cervantes. <laughs> And Lori Cervantes, please join Martin for the photo. Martin deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom 2008 and 2011. Thank you for your service. During these deployments, he produced artwork that visually recorded soldiers' experiences, the Army's achievements. Two of his oil paintings were recently, recently featured in the National Constitution Center's public exhibition, Art of the American Soldier, in Philadelphia. He is a self-taught artist who had created art since he was a child, currently a studio artist at the Workhouse Art Center, and the first military veteran artist in residence at the center. I try to create a connection with the viewer that allows them to feel as if they are part of the scene or they can walk right in and join the situation. I create a sense of depth and space that intrigues curiosity as well as conversation. My art is meant to be a storytelling device and invokes stories to be shared with friends, family, and the public. Martin, thank you. Man, I love those jeans. I gotta have a pair of those jeans. <laughs> Somehow I think you gotta be an artist to make those jeans. <laughs> Do you see those jeans, Marty? They are. I have the best set of No. We need to paint those up. Outstanding Arts Organization requires that the group devises special, innovative, and exemplary programs in support of the arts has a history of contributions and specific recent arts programs, is recognized by its peers and reviewers for excellence and leadership in the field, and draws attention and recognition to the region. Examples include, from the youngest toddler to a in a butterfly costume to the seasoned singer, each performer of KPAC produce production exudes a spirituality with their dancing, singing, and speaking and the Center of the Arts in Greater Manassas Prince William represents a remarkable successful blending of a private donation of historic property to the city of Manassas with subsequent joint development in the area for the education in the arts for all ages. The New Dominion Coraliers are a true family with members aged 15 to 96 who learn from and support each other during the choral season and beyond by giving back to the community in spirit as well as song. Recently performed the Prince William String Academy, hosted an instrument petting zoo at Arts Alive. Its faculty have been actively involved in providing additional musical opportunities for orchestra students in the local public schools. An eight-year-old ballet student credits the Virginia National Ballet's contribution to the arts in the area with her favorite part of the company as the performances, her teachers, and the other dancers, and all the things she gets to do. Those quotes make our 2017 awardee for Outstanding Arts Organization tough act. Uh, well, actually, the whole evening is a bunch of tough acts to follow. <laughs> Yet, and I know this is true, the Manassas Corral does just that. Where are you? Oh. <laughs> Come up and come back in. 
You've enjoyed seeing your portrait all evening. <laughs> In this 23rd season, my goodness, auditioned community choir forms four concerts a year as an inaugural Hilton Performing Arts Center resident partner. And we are great. Sings for community and civic events, included for wounded warriors, traveled to singing across Europe, candlelight concert every December in historic Williamsburg. The Manassas Chorale provides numerous opportunities to travel in performances with other musical groups. In 2011, they participated in Memorial at Lincoln Center in New York City, remembering the events of 2001. They collaborated with Grey Ghost Theater Company to present Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, a Civil War musical and mixed singing spoken word performance. Last year, they created the Manassas Children's Choir for students in grades two through eight, and in 2018, will permit, will participate in performances at Carnegie Hall as a part of a summer of serenade in Germany and Austria. And didn't you do the Daily and Vincent recording with us too? Yes. I thought so. I'll tell you a story about this one. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> So you remember the Daily and Vincent thing we did here a couple years ago? It was a PBS special, and the whole community had to pretend like, you know, they were the audience that had just shown up, and of course we spent three days taping it. Well, I was traveling through Pennsylvania and stopped at a Cracker Barrel, and there hanging from the ceiling were Vincent and Daly ads for that video. And I said to somebody, well, I'm from Manassas, and that's where we produced this thing, and I was part of that. They took all of them down and made me sign them all. <laughs> Kind of cute, but that was a Manassas crowd. Pioneer Award for Lifetime Contributions to the Arts has only been awarded when justified by historic, exemplary, and inspirational work. Our awardee for 2017 established innovative programs in our region 36 years ago and has influenced students in the community beyond her classrooms has inspired students to have a lifelong love of the arts, has exhibited creativity, passion, exemplary performance, and is an individual leader. If the aforementioned criteria sound familiar, they speak to an outstanding artist, educator, business supporter, patron, and leader of an arts organization. Anne Boyle. caricature portrait of me and under that caricature portrait is a phrase from the opera La Boheme which is occhia la scala tiente alla ringhiera which means watch out for the first step it's a theater <laughs> and it's, it's what they say if you are you are it's what they say to artists when they make their debut at La Scala, which means the steps. So, Orquia La Scala, Tiente a la We're just joking, of course. So I'll I, tell you, my, my daughter didn't even tell me what I was coming to tonight. She said, just get on some nice clothes and go. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your program and what you're doing right now. Oh, right now we're going crazy because we're going to, in three weeks, have our spring concert here in the, uh, I always call it La Scala because it's such a beautiful theater. Um, and we're going to do a tribute to visual artists through dance. And uh, so it's going to be on June 17th, two performances, one in the seven. And uh, so we are in the midst of costumes, choreography, and, you know, the whole thing. So that's what we're doing right now. And we just finished with the Dominion Coraliers. Which I have to put something out for the Dominion Choir. You should. They are fantastic. I have been working with Kathy Nelson Tracy now for over 30 years. 
and uh, we were both about 10 at that time. <laughs> and uh, they are so fantastic, and I do wish they would have a bigger audience because they deserve it. They are so good. And that little 96-year-old man that you talked about, he came up to me and he asked me if he was too young to learn how to tap dance. <laughs> fantastic. Well, now, wait a minute. I got your history here. Okay. Trained in Dayton, New York. I know where Dayton, Ohio is. Where's Dayton, Dayton? Uh, and, and New York. Oh, in Dayton, Dayton and New York. <laughs> <laughs> and Dayton, Ohio. You right. don't know this. Has the number two steakhouse in America, as said by the New York Times and some of the great people. Really? Dayton, Ohio, yep. Huh. And London, where you were in the Royal Ballet School of Teachers, and you've been a guest performer, lots of ballet companies and four other schools, mm -hmm. a serial dance school person, <laughs> and on the board of five ballet companies. Choreographer of the Year Award for the Alliance of Community Theaters, six-time recipient of the Virginia Governor's School Award, Outstanding Educator of the Year. Probably a couple more to go, would you think? Like to. <laughs> and um, seasonal performances that alumni get to participate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, congratulations, Anne. Thank you so much. You know, the Chinese stole an airplane, and they took it apart, and they put it back together, and it wouldn't fly. And they couldn't figure out why it wouldn't fly, so they had no choice but to bring in some engineers from Boeing. And the Boeing engineer said, well, your problem is you got it put together right, but your problem was you didn't understand where the sole of the airplane was. Right. And if you don't get the sole of it right, it won't fly. In my opinion, dance is the sole of the airplane. Absolutely. If we don't have dance, it won't fly. That's right. So, That's congratulations. Right. Thank you. say, aren't you going to retire? No, never, because I am so lucky to have this passion for yeah. dance and for teaching and for hold, helping to mold uh, students' lives. And, and thank you for your support. I, I really believe it. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Boyle answered the phone, and I remembered asking her, I want to tap dance. Can you teach me to dance like Gene Kelly? She responded, if you practice and work hard, I think so. I was hooked. I went down to see the studio for myself, and she showed me around, and I fell in love with the facility. I wasn't working at the moment, and I figured I could start dancing as soon as I got a job and I could afford it. I got ready to walk out and then turned to Ms. Boyle and said, I can't really afford classes right now, but if you need someone to clean the studio for you, I'd be happy to do that if you could lower my tuition price. I don't know what Miss Ann saw me that day, but she said, okay, you take care of the studio and I'll put you on full of scholarship. That day changed my life. I went on to take dances for Miss Ann for years. She taught me everything about performing, about the structure of my life. Learning from her was one of the turning points in my growth as a boy growing up in Virginia. Because of her belief in me, I've gone on to choreograph several television shows, became a character on the Nickelodeon show Victorious. I've had the blessing of choreographing, choreographing fashion shows, stage plays, musicals, and have dozens of opportunities because of her. Anne Boyle and dance, etc., changed my life, and I'll always be eternally grateful 
Sincerely, Lane Neighbor. Lane Neighbor Choreography Reel. Oh, yellow scarlet, hit the yellow. It's sort of like that. So now we have a group photo. I think this means that we are almost free to go. But if you are an awardee, you may not go. Because we need you to all come up and take a photo. And for the rest of us, so the first night that Lauren Mazel, remember Lauren Mazel, famous conductor, was here and they did the opera. And everybody was gone except Mr. Mazel. And he got in his car and got lost. Got lost driving off campus. And the campus police picked him up and gave him a breathalyzer test. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, you be careful driving out of here, all right? <laughs> Wait, don't even, any ruckus with the campus police. But uh, this has been a beautiful evening of celebration. It rests on the shoulders of an enormous amount of work. I mean, collectively, couldn't even count the hours. And uh, as a sense of beauty, a sense of meaning, a sense of uh, belonging, priceless. So, see you all next year. Keep working. If you've already been awarded, you can't be awarded next year, I'm sure. So, <laughs> there's a chance. Thank you, everybody.